In this video, we'll learn how to use loops with arrays in P5JS. These two coding techniques are a natural fit for one another, since arrays are great at storing lots of information, and loops are great at quickly cycling through things. So let's take a look at our example here, and this is where we left off looking at how to use a two-dimensional array. So I can see here in my function setup, I've got these four lines of code that I'm using to manually set each element in my point array. This is fine for just setting a couple of elements, but if I wanted to add any more elements to this, my code is gonna start getting really long, harder to manage. So let's say that my goal here is I'd like to have probably 30 or so uh, elements in this point array, each one responsible for a location on the screen. So let's go ahead and start up a for loop here. And I'll need to make myself a variable. That's gonna be our iterator. I'll just call this i, and let's start it at zero. Now, next we need to set up the exit condition. And since at this point in our code, the array is still empty. So I couldn't do something like test for its length. That wouldn't make sense. Here, what I'm gonna do is create a global variable up at the top of my code, and I'll call this something like point count. And for now, let's set this at 25. So back in my for loop, I'll finish that exit condition. I'll say loop as long as my iterator variable is less than my point count variable, and then increment by one each time we loop. Now, I've got my for loop, and I've wrapped that block around those four lines that I'm using right now to set my point array elements. And my goal here is to get rid of these four lines of code, and I wanna sub out something that's a little bit more general purpose that I can use to take advantage of my loop to build up my array. So I'm just gonna comment out these lines for now, and I'll use them sort of as a structure uh, to build up my loop code. So every time the loop runs, I'd like to be paying attention to a different element in that point array. And so rather than typing in a static index number here, I'm gonna swap that out with my iterator variable. So that way each time the loop runs, we'll be looking at a different element in that point array. And each time we come to that element, I'd like to set up a new two element array that's gonna keep track of a different location point on the screen. So looking here at the numbers that I'm setting into each of those two element arrays, I can see they're going up by 20 every time. So I could still make use of that iterator variable and just multiply it by 20. So you can imagine when we start out and i is zero, my coordinates are gonna be zero, zero. When i is one, I'll get 20, 20, 40, 40, 60, 60, and so on. So now I can get rid of those lines where I'm populating the array manually. And you can see I've actually reduced the lines of code that I have, but my code is now more flexible and I can populate that array with as many elements as I want, basically. And I can see down in my console, uh, this print statement where I'm doing the array join and displaying every coordinate that's stored in there. Now I've got a set of 25 coordinate points. So that's an example of using a loop to build an array from scratch but we can also use a loop to cycle through an existing array. And that's great when we need to check the information in the array. Maybe we wanna do some tests or search for a piece of data. What I'd like to do now is take all the points stored in that point array variable and use them to draw some shapes on the screen. And so down in draw, I can use this line that I've already set up where I've typed in uh, basically hard coded index values to reference one specific point that's stored in my point array. So let's go ahead and set up another for loop here. Again, we need an iterator variable. I'll just call it j. We'll start at zero. And this time for our exit condition, uh, since we have the point array already set up, we can test for its length and use that to make sure that we're just looking at the full length of the array. So my exit condition is gonna be uh, loop while j is less than point array dot length. And then increment j by one every time the loop runs. So again, we'll wrap that for loop block around our existing line of code that's drawing the ellipse. And I'll just comment that out for reference. And real similar to uh, building up the array with a loop, our, our goal here is to create a more general purpose line of code that's taking advantage of our iterator variable to cycle through the array and do stuff. So I'm gonna copy this line of code here and we can do some switching now, what I'd like to happen is to cycle through each element in that point array. So rather than hard coding the number three in there, uh, I wanna swap out J 
for each one of these. And since the format of my two-dimensional array is always the same, right, and I can see down here in my console, I'm always dealing with two elements uh, within each element of the point array because it's a two-dimensional array. And for every element in that point array, the x value or the horizontal value is going to be element zero, and the y value or the vertical value is going to be element one. Now, that just happens to be the way my array is set up. Uh, and this technique will work just as well for a one-dimensional array as a two-dimensional array. So you'll always need to make sure you're thinking through, uh, you know, what your index number formatting is going to be. So we can get rid of that commented line. Now, you can see here, I've actually added a couple lines of code to uh, cycle through and draw out those ellipses. But that makes it much easier to draw many more shapes on the screen, uh, all taking advantage of the combination of looping and arrays. In terms of vocabulary, you'll also hear it referred to as traversing an array or iterating over an array. Both of those refer to the idea of using a loop to go through an array, check the information, or do something with it like we've done here.